the problem is complicated exponentially when you have someone like senior advocate Chetan Sharma in the audience. <coughs> this doesn't end here. The yoga's presence of Sri Harimas Ji, Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha. But he carries another hat. That's always worrisome for me. A journalist is always a journalist. In 1989, when I got elected to Parliament and became a Union Minister, my room in Parliament was next to the press room. Till 2019, I carried an impression, oh, you can't have better friends than in journalism. The myth was demolished when I became governor of the state of West Bengal. I hope it is restored. I will do all I can. Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, Sri Rahul Joshi Ji, members of the diplomatic corps, other dignitaries, and my friends in the media. I can assure you, I am certainly your friend. I hope you will reciprocate. Indeed, a marquee event, all the more significant, being hosted in Amrath Kal. It is imminently befitting and soothing that focus and attention is being bestowed on our real heroes. I pause here for a moment. I have always been concerned. Iconic status in our country is accorded on parameters that are baffling. Event management can put a person in a position. He is a leading lawyer. He is a leading journalist. And what not. But we are talking of real heroes. At a time when India is on the rise as never before, it is a statement of fact, globally acknowledged. And the rise is unstoppable, earning unprecedented global recognition and respect. As a mark of respect to our heroes, let's pledge take pride in our historic accomplishments and be our proud Indians. Always keep nation first. No interest, business or otherwise, can be more than national interest, above national interest. And this, when I say is not optional, I reflect the viewpoint of more than a billion people. <laughs> the theme of the coffee table book unveiled a while ago, to be unveiled, Voice of India, Modi and his transformative monkey bath is very apt. And I compliment the Rahul for being very daring in choosing it. Monkey Bath, in a sense, has impactfully captured the imagination of the people. And mind you, there can hardly be any difference of opinion. This is one program that is watched with keen interest and that impacts the lives of people as never before in the history of this country. And this is for honest discourse and seamless connect with the people. I appeal to media for wider dissemination of the coffee, coffee tape book content as I have been given details thereof. Let us highlight success stories of real Bharat and exemplify our age-old value system. Friends, 
We are the most functional democracy in the world. There be no doubt about it. There is no democracy in the world that is constitutionally evolved at the level of panchayat, municipalities, state, and center. We have constitutional prescription in the shape of Part 9 of the Constitution for panchayats and 9 capital A for municipalities. No world government can claim to have such a vibrant functional democracy reflecting diversity and unity simultaneously. Our constitutional institutions are spinally strong and independent. We are proud of our judicial system. Where on the planet you'll get a Supreme Court which can act with lightning speed and grant relief when someone is accused of defamation? Where on earth? Where will you get a Supreme Court that will sit over time? We have finest judges and the Chief Justice has unimpeachable credentials with global image. None in the world has legitimacy or credentials to lessen us on this aspect. Of late, some are engaged into it. I wouldn't say more because in our country we have effective government and we have seen in last few months how effectively our external affairs minister has reflected on those issues in public domain, in the country and outside. But those so engaged need to look within and revisit their thoughts. But what is painful, worrisome and concerning that some amongst us are engaged in thoughtless orchestration of sinister campaign to taint and tarnish our democratic institutions. We find sinister forces within and without, functional with pernicious agenda to sully and downsize our growth trajectory, our democratic institutions and run down our success. You will not find a parallel in the world where people holding positions of power would go to other country, other geographical locales to run down their own country. We all need to reflect on this. We need to be cognizant of virtual intense warfare against India's integrity by well orchestrated global machinery functioning within and outside the country. One can see an entire ecosystem aimed at handicapping our growth, attacking India's legitimacy as nation state, its constitutional institutions, including the parliament, is becoming a favorite pastime, even of some of us. I am sure thinking minds in the country will be alive and take all steps to contain and combat such pernicious tendency. An intense assault on India's values, integrity and institutions is emanating from well-maintained incubators. I wouldn't say much, but I'll call upon the media. Look at South Asia studies in an Ivy League university. This is being funded by our billionaires. Even the government in 2008 funded it. And the same is also being, being done by our northern neighbor. But look at their activities with respect to our nation and with respect to that nation. It's a cause of concern and worry. Should we be funding those 
whose only agenda is to thoughtlessly, in a designed manner, run down this nation. I am sure my friends in journalism, and I am sure I am their friend, so are they mine, will reflect on this, engage in due diligence, and let the people of this country know all about this. This ecosystem to combat India's growth trajectory must not, must not be allowed to go unnoticed. And that can happen only when we react. Such orchestrated narratives are disseminated and this is, I seek pardon of the journalistic fraternity. Orchestration, emanating in a sinister manner with pernicious design is put in high decibel and disseminated by media and intelligentsia. The activities of Goebbels pale into insignificance. Friends, the real tribute to our real heroes, because of whom we are enjoying this democracy, are in the 75th year, because of whom we are laying the foundation of 2047, when India will be celebrating centenary of its independence. A tribute to those real heroes is to ensure the relentless crusade against corruption fructifies into legal finality. It is most unfortunate and a matter of concern that legally sanctified crusade against corruption is sought to be combated by partisan stunts and individual concerns. How can issues of corruption be seen from political prism? How can issues of corruption be seen from the interest of an individual? Issues of corruption have to be seen in the backdrop of the fact matrix. It is time for all of us to realize none in democracy, none in democracy can claim on any ground whatsoever position or otherwise, to be above law and beyond the reach of law. Accountability to law is not optional in democracy. It is inalienable facet of democracy. There can be no democracy, there can be no democratic values. If some individuals can claim and walk away with it, we are different. Doesn't matter. You do it by both method. It is time for all to reconcile to this level playing field reality. And always remember, I am referring to a quote, often quoted, quote, be you ever so high, the law is always above you, unquote. I don't know why some people can garner support ignoring this such vital a sense of democracy and such kind of a legal situation. Issues including arising out of judicial verdicts have to be systemically addressed. There is a mechanism to address all issues under the constitution. There is a hierarchical mechanism. If there is a verdict of the court one way or the other, it is not optional for the government or the concerned person to obey it or not to obey it. There is only one option. Obey it or take recourse to lawful remedy. I was reading a book and I'm in the process of it. I'll give a quote from it. Quote, one doesn't find, one doesn't fight a patient's ailment by holding placards, 
and sounding slogans against the germs, unquote. The issue will have to be diagnosed, debated, and problem resolved. Friends, in recent years, there has been due and commendable recognition to our unsung heroes obscured in our history. I wouldn't take to details, you all know it. This never happened. Look at the canopy at India Gate, and we have majestic Subhashtandar Bose giving us all the inspiration. <laughs> or for that matter, Birsa Munda, a Bhagwan, how we have commemorated him by having that day. Friends, in recent years, the tangible transformation of governance system has led to emergence of transparent and accountable ecosystem. I'll give two illustrations. Power corridors were long infested with people engaging in lying and what not have now been sanitized. So sanitized that people don't talk about it now. What used to be a very lucrative industry, it has vanished. And another sea change that has come to be affected in bureaucracy. Bureaucratic positioning, there is eclipse of plum posts. A big change. There was a time when there used to be lobby and industry used to be working overnight in overdrive to ensure who would hold a particular position for a secretary of a particular department. No longer. Because work is worship. You don't wield power in authority. You serve in power. And that is why less government, more governance. It is tribute to our heroes that wholesome transformation is taking place owing to series of governmental initiatives and policies enabling citizens to fully exploit their potential and talent. You all know it. We had the occasion to see in this country long queues even to pay your bill. They vanished. We could never imagine that there could be some kind of inclusive growth and banking, that during most difficult days of pandemic, there could be direct transfer. We could never imagine that 11 crore farmers will get more than 2,20,000 crores directly in their accounts. In the process, Another lucrative industry has died. Middleman. It has vanished. New vistas of opportunities are now available. It is in this backdrop that our track record in producing more than 80,000 startups and more than 100 unicorns is envy of the world. India today is a global destination of investment an opportunity in otherwise stressed global scenario. Friends, it was a moment of pride for us all in September 2022 when India became the fifth largest global economy. And there was another satisfying factor. In the process, we overtook our erstwhile colonial rulers, the UK. By turn of the decade, India will be the third largest global economy. Friends, I have a special appeal for journalists and intelligentsia. Don't mistake me. I take journalists to be part of intelligentsia, but only to make my point a little more emphatically, I have put them in two categories. So, intelligentsia that includes journalists 
and others. My appeal to them is, please generate a climate so that our parliamentarians and temples of democracy exemplify high standards worth emulating by people at large. Why I say so? Our constituent assembly that functioned for three years and had several sessions, it comprised of illustrious people who believed in nationalism and freedom. They gave us a constitution to us facing contentious issues, divisive issues, and they navigated it without disruption, without disturbance, engaging in debate, dialogue, discussion, and deliberation. There was no occasion for them to come to the well, show placards, or throw papers. And I know for sure, more than a billion people do not relish it. They are concerned at it. Media has a big role to play. And I'm sure my friends will heed my advice because we have come to a stage now where disorder has become the normal order in Parliament. And nothing can be more worrisome than this. It will be real tribute to our heroes that all of us taken together do all we can to nurture and blossom our democracy gifted to us by the sacrifice of real heroes. This can be best achieved and democratic values and public interest optimally served when legislature, the judiciary and the executive discharge their respective obligations, scrupulously confining to their respective domain and acting in harmony, togetherness and tandem. Friends, in a dynamic governance and democracy which we are, there will never be a situation where there will be no issues between the institutions. The issues are natural, they are bound to be there. These issues are required to be resolved, taking recourse to deliberative mechanism in a structured manner. And I am sure if we evolve a structured interactive mechanism, then resolution of issues will be seamless. We need to do it. I wonder sometimes that an expression of a viewpoint, a sublime legal preposition, is dubbed by media with those headlines. That should not take place. I appeal to you. Personally, for me, I can assure you, and there is one in the audience who will bear it out, I'm a foot soldier of judiciary. I've been a senior advocate for over three decades. I've held positions as president of the association and in the Bar Council. How can I, for an, even for a moment, ever contemplate that by action or word I will do something which will damage the institution. We signal authorities that this is required to be done in this manner. I, will, I would use this platform. Let those at the helm of constitutional institutions not communicate in public domain. Friends, I share with millions of countrymen deep sense of appreciation for real, real heroes. It's because of them that we are here. It is because of their sacrifice that India today is on the rise. It is because of their efforts that not only our voice is heard globally, the nations wait to find out what is India's stand on this particular issue. Our image in the Committee of Nations is at a very high pedestal. And by 2047, warriors of which are present here, some of us may not be around, but youngsters here, they are the spinal strength 
to realize our dream of being a world leader. I express sense of gratitude to Rahul Ji, Network 18, for devoting this program to them. We shall ever be indebted to them. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you for standing ovation for Mr. Deep Thakkar.